Welcome back, everyone. Tonight we saw 1917. Connor, what is the plot of 1917? 1917 is about two people in World War I who are tasked with warning uh, another battalion about how the Germans are trying to trick them into attacking, but in reality it's a trap and the Germans want them to attack so that they can be outgunned and killed. And the two men journey six miles to the enemy camp to warn them. I guess that's about the best I could do for the plot without spoiling anything. So Aiden, what did you think of 1917? 1917 is a fantastic movie. It's beautiful. It's, um, God, it's a lot of things. I was thinking throughout the movie that it's not like most historical movies. This movie's, you know, most, most, uh, war movies are either kind of like action-y or drama, but this felt a lot like a horror movie in a lot of ways. It kind of does have, like, that, like, sound mixing that's kind of yeah, horror it's, it's the tension, it's the sound mixing. Yeah. It's the, um, the death everywhere. It's not so much, like, graphic violence. Like, there's not a lot of violence on screen. Yeah, when people do get sh like, <clears throat> there are, like, gratuitous things you see, but when people die, it's not like Saving Private Ryan where they explode and guts start flying everywhere. Yeah, it's... It's pretty subdued for the most part, but there are just, it's death everywhere. And it's like, they start out uh, in the no man's land between the um, German front line and their, um, their original starting spot. And the no man's land is just like dead trees and mud and corpses and rats and nothing else. And that pretty much continues the whole movie. Yeah. Everywhere there's just corpses. The and... movie does have kind of that horror sense where it's like there's a lot of tension that's built. Like at any time you think they could be attacked or they could walk into a booby trap or something. So yeah. it definitely builds a lot of tension in the film and that's that's really cool how that works out. Like they did it really yeah. well. There was other little moments too that reminded me of that when he's um when he gets to that French occupied city and uh He's just staring down the uh, the other soldier. And neither one of them's really sure who the other is, and then the soldier just starts dead sprinting at him and shooting him. And it's weirdly horror esque, which is fitting for World War One, considering you know how World War One was with all right. the uh, you know laying in a dirty mud pit full of corpses and rats and getting gassed to death. Not a very pleasant uh, war. Um, the the sound in this movie is absolutely fantastic throughout, um, both the score and everything else. The score always has drums going on in some fashion. Um, at times it'll be these really really heavy drums, and um, they they use the score really well to set the mood and make you feel anxious and tense and. Like, everything could just go bad at any time. Um, but also, the sound design throughout, where a lot of the movie's pretty quiet, and so there's a lot of, like, muddy footprints and heavy breathing, and the way the, uh, the guns, they don't really sound like movie guns, where it's like pew pew or bang, but they, like, crack. They crack every time they shoot their guns, mm. and it's kind of shocking. And then there's one scene that has a... A, um, I assume it's a claymore, but some kind of planted explos explosive with a tripwire. That thing going off shatters your brain. It's loud. It's it's pretty frightening. Maybe um, we should come back to that once we cross spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Just um, so we don't like ruin the tension of that scene. I'll just cut that out. And visually, it's just absolutely fantastic. Like I mean, when they're in the French city, that's really cool. Yeah, with the uh, like running the away. fires. They do a lot. Um, they do a lot of natural lighting. There was times when there was stage lighting, but it was subtle. Um, there's a part where they're in a bunker underground and it's all black and pretty much the only lights coming from their uh, little handheld flashlights, like everything behind them is just pitch black. Yeah, the cinematography in this movie is probably the best cinematography of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, and they do the beautiful movie. they do the Birdman with the continuous they'd make it look like a continuous shot, obviously it's not, they 
these editing tricks and stuff. Uh, but I think it's quite a bit more impressive in this movie, since this movie's got, you know, Birdman was basically just a drama with a gimmick. Yeah. But here, but there's did... action and movement. And... and Birdman does things to, like, try to, like, cut it, where there'll be, like, time lapses around the character. Which had an interesting effect, but felt more transition-y, where this just felt like you followed the entire story, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's it's really, really well done visually and auditorily, and um, even, you know, the dialogue's pretty sparse, but, you know, you, you kind of get a sense of who the characters are just from their little interactions with each other and the way they talk about how things used to be and how they feel about the war and stuff like that. I also like that it's in the war a little more because movies like Full Metal Jacket are like, yeah, we're going to war, this is going to be great. And it's definitely, an, and like, glorious. And then they realize the horrors of war later, which is definitely an aspect that I think is true about war. So it's interesting to see that aspect, but it's kind of nice because it almost feels like it's a different take where, like, this dude, yeah, they're already the main in, dude just wants to get back to his family. They're already in the heart of it, and they've right. already been beaten down by it. And, and like, yeah, you had, like, the more optimistic character who's like, oh, you didn't want to take home your medal? And then the other guy was kind of like, yeah, I don't really care about all that anymore because it's unimportant. Pretty the much. things they give yeah. us is basically just trash to make us feel good Yep. for a minute. So I thought that was kind of hard-hitting, and that was really cool. And I... I guess I'll talk about that during spoilers, but I, I definitely think, like, the sound design builds a lot of tension. Because there's a lot of points where things aren't really happening, but it feels like something could happen any minute. Yeah. And when something does happen, it's, like, actually a really good payoff. Like, it feels like a really well-done horror movie, basically, kind of like you were implying. Like, they actually really build tension. Well, the s scares kind of do have like loud noises and stuff it doesn't really feel like a jump scare where it's like like it actually feels like everything's like fulfilling when it does happen and everything seems pretty realistic for the most part yeah i don't know i thought the leads were really good in it i thought it was kind of cool seeing like different aspects of how the war affects people um so is there anything you want else you wanted to cover before we go into spoilers no uh, nope i'm ready for spoilers all right, I think it's about time we moved into spoilers. Connor, what, are the what did spoilers? you think of <laughs> the spoilers? <laughs> What's your favorite spoiler? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and grab your sodas. <laughs> Today we're going to look at the top ten spoilers of 1917. <laughs> Anyways, now I think it's time for us to get into spoilers, so if you haven't seen this movie yet, I'd highly recommend it. Yeah, we have Watch it in IMAX while it's still in theaters. Um, so Aiden. Anyway, so partway through the film, one of the soldiers who's going to warn the... Anyway, so partway through the movie, one of the soldiers who was trying to warn the other battalion about the German <coughs> surprise attack ends up getting killed by a German pilot. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, you, there's a lot of death in the movie, so you have the vague sense that one of them is going to die at some point. Although, it, it comes pretty early and pretty, pretty suddenly. It's not exactly right. heroic death. He kind of just dies. It's a little shocking. Um, I think it's one of the more, like, dramatic death scenes I've ever seen in film. Like, he actually, he, like, starts to turn more pale. Yeah. He's, like, <clears throat> freaking out because he's about to die. Like, he naturally would, but it actually feels like the dude actually got killed. And it also comes off as kind of random because other parts, <laughs> like, when they're crossing the line at the start of the movie, you think that's when they would probably die. Or you think it's in the mine shaft. But then you kind of expect, like... They're going to help this German guy, and he's going to let him go or die or something, and they're going to learn, like, a lesson about it. So you really don't expect it, especially because that part of the movie is, like, abnormally quiet compared to the rest. Like, yeah. once the German guy's down. Um, and then it gets a lot more dramatic. Um, and I think it leads into a lot of good symbolism. Like, when they're walking up, he's talking about, like, his home life, how he used to, like, uh, work out the, the cherry fields orchard. with the cherries. <clears throat> and, uh... 
to see like the Nazis cutting down the cherry trees and he's like it'll grow back eventually and then later on in the movie the main guy who doesn't die ends up like finding the cherry trees right before he finds the battalion he's trying to warn about the attack it's really cool symbolism that pulls through I mean it's it's more overt than a lot of symbolism in the movie but it's still really cool like payback or, like not payback but like it's really cool like uh just symbolism for how the movie works. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of good moments of tension building. Um, one I really like is um, after he, after the death of his friend, uh, he, he rides with a caravan for a little bit and they kind of drop him off closer to where he needs to be. And he's crossing down this broken bridge. He's walking on the railing so he doesn't get in the water. And then the German starts shooting at him. There's like this music building up as he goes down and he's like scrambling up the side of the bridge and um, they do really good uh, tension and payoffs um, him capturing that German soldier for a moment putting his hand over his mouth and then the German soldier yells and he gets in a little fight with him and has to choke him unconscious and running from the bullets afterwards and um, I think my favorite part of the movie though is probably the the uh, Nazi mine shaft at the towards the start when a rat accidentally sets off a tripwire inside the uh, German bunker thing, <clears throat> and that's the bomb going off is really shocking. And then especially because up to that point there wasn't any like payoff. To yeah, the there's tension. like no sound, no payoff to the tension. That's the first like big release of tension. It's just it's super loud and like disorienting even to the audience and then um, the guy who doesn't get stabbed um, I don't even know if they have names I don't they, they do have. I'm trying to remember what they were I was keeping note of them oh Will Will's the one that survives yes Will something uh, it starts with an S Sky something, something. Will Skywalker <laughs> but uh, he's blinded by the dust from the explosion so he has to the, be led through the collapsing mine shaft and make a jump over a little pit mine thing, mine pit. pit. Yeah. yeah, that's really like unique and exciting and something you just don't see in movies. Really, it's I don't know. There's it's a lot not of, like it's, overly dramatic either. Like it seems like something realistic <coughs> where it's like. Something that would actually be in a mine shaft instead of like Indiana Jones is on a cart and starts hopping rails and shit on a two ton yeah. mine cart or whatever. The movie really, really goes hard on the whole death thing. The whole, I mean, that was just kind of like how World War One was. At the start of the movie, he accidentally puts his fist through like a German soldier's chest cavity, a dead German soldier. And like, ooh. Yeah. And then they look to the right and there's like just a corpse embedded in the side of the trench and it's a uh, even without overt violence you just get the feeling of death that world war one brought it's really well moody and i like climbing. that will is like less optimistic than the other guy <laughs> and they both kind of see it different ways where like the one that dies i can't remember his name right now which is embarrassing but he kind of talks about like he's like making jokes and talking about funny stuff in the trench and kind of trying to make the best of it, but then, you know, Will is more like concerned about getting back to his family, although we don't really overtly know that he has a family right away. They kind of hint at it, like when he meets the French girl <coughs> in the mine or in uh, in the French village underground. I don't know. It's really good. Yeah, that's really good. You should definitely see it if you've uh, not already stopped watching. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that we both recommend it very highly. And I would recommend seeing it in IMAX because the sound yeah. design and visuals are absolutely I would fantastic. definitely try to see it as soon as possible uh, because I doubt it'll be in theaters much longer. And I feel like it's one of those movies, I actually saw it twice now, so it's really <coughs> interesting. I don't know the characters' names, but um, I saw it and it was like the first time I saw it in IMAX, I was like, oh, I gotta take Aiden to see this. Cause it's one of those movies where I feel like it would still be a great movie if you watched it at home, 
but I feel like if you watch it in IMAX, it's just like adds so much like the sound design's crazy the surround sounds great and just because like this like one of my favorite parts of the movie is just the sound design <coughs> like well, cinematography and stuff you can kind of save and watch on a tv but unless you have a really good sound system you're not really going to get the full effect of the film yeah i mean every time that a gun was fired in the movie i jumped it's like mm -hmm. it is a sound and it is a sound that crack and red yeah, it's a really intense movie. <coughs> Overall, obviously, we'd both recommend it. Um, I think 2019 actually ended pretty damn well. Because since we made our list, I've seen like three of my favorite <laughs> movies of the year. I didn't see yeah. Jojo Rabbit when we made the list. Uncut Jojo Gems. Rabbit's one of my favorite. Uncut Gems I didn't see when we made the list. That's one of my favorite movies of the year. And 1917 was also fabulous. There's actually a lot of good stuff in 2019. There's a lot of shit, but there's always a lot of shit. Disproportionately good to bad compared to most. 2019 years. didn't have a Facebook ghost movie, so that makes it better than 2018. 2019 didn't have a Birds of Prey. When you think of getting stabbed by a German soldier, the last thing you'd <laughs> expect is when he comes out of an airplane and is on fire. <laughs> that might be what you get. <laughs> <laughs>